All right, all right, all right. We are back here at Song of the Day, coming to you from the Rock Cave. I'm your host, Mark Harris. It's Friday. Say it with me. <clears throat> Say it with me. It is Octane Friday. And that's when we kick it up a notch. Uh, we're on a roll here in the cave. I don't know how long the streak's going to go on. I mean, we did take a couple days off, so it's true. But uh, we've been doing a lot of Song of the Days recently. Most of you stuck with me. Still loving uh, Woodstock. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, anyway. What are we talking about today? Uh, here's one. Here's a band we've only covered once. And not this record. So it's new. Here in the cave. Wow, check that out. Uh, we're talking about the band Warrant uh, and their debut record, Dirty, Rotten, Filthy, Stinking Rich, released this week, uh, yesterday, January 31st, 1989. Warrant, L.A. band formed in 1984, three years after Motley Crue formed in the same city, uh, and they were doing the same L.A. club scene and doing all that stuff. They were getting popular. Lots of fair amount of lineup changes. Um, and uh, they ended up getting uh, some offers. And they ended up getting signed to Columbia. And right around the same time, they they were touring or, uh, touring with Britney Fox. Who remembers Britney Fox? Raise your hand. <laughs> I saw Britney Fox open. I saw them more than once. I saw them open up for uh, Ozzy somewhere in the late 80s. And I saw them open for uh, either Rat or ACDC. I can't remember. Britney Fox and White Lion seemed to show up a lot in the late 80s. Uh, but anyway, I signed to Columbia, started working on their debut record. And uh, this record came out, and it was got some pretty good reviews. Ended up having three hit singles out of four totally released. Um, and um, they made a name for themselves. But their debut single uh, was uh, Down Boys, which they called themselves that. That was their nickname for their band. Uh, the first single, Down Boys, went to number 27. And this was heavy. Uh, this was like respectable heavy music, especially for 89, because there was a lot of that uh, power ballad stuff going on. So if you probably bought the record for Down Boys, you were going to get hit with some power ballads. But uh, Down Boys, great song. Uh, that got people's interest. But then, of course, their second single off this record, Heaven. There you go. Uh, shot up the charts, went to number two for two weeks. Uh, it's a weird story with Heaven, because uh, the first 250,000 copies of this record had one version of Heaven, which, by the way, was a song left over from singer uh, Jane Lane's uh, band, uh, Plain Jane. A quarter of a million of the records had the original version, but when it got popular, the record label was like, yeah, I think you need to make this a little more powerful for the radio so they remixed it re-recorded or did something so the rest of the records had that the new version on there uh it's just, just that's an interesting story just because remember when you buy a single sometimes the single version you got was not the album version when you went and bought the album which was sometimes a surprise either good bad or otherwise third single uh and that song heaven of course so uh, you know just loved by everybody, especially women. Uh, Big Talk was their third single. That didn't do much, but their fourth one was Sometimes She Cries, another power ballad. Uh, that one went to number 20. Uh, so yeah, this was, uh, this, was a, this was a decent record. There's all kinds of stories about this record. Uh, the first of which is, did the guitarist play, that was with them, play on it, or was it a session guitarist? Mike Slamer? Something like that? What do we got going on here? One take. Uh, and was it Eric Turner? Wasn't it Eric Turner? Mike's, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Mike Slamer. 
Uh, his wife says that it was him playing on it. He, the guitarist says it was him. The producer says it was him. Eric Turner says otherwise. Something about the guitar solos, who played the guitar solos on the record. It's similar to the story of Ozzy. There was the uh, same controversy with one of Ozzy's records. Lots of drama there. The other drama was that in the, when they were getting ready to, when they were recording this, uh, Janie Lane walked in on his best friend and his girlfriend. So he had some kind of mental health issue and they had to delay the release of the record. And then he ends up writing the song I See Red, which you see on Ch uh, Cherry Pie, which is the one record we did record, uh, we did discover, or talk about. <sighs> All right, Friday, people. But anyway, here's, that's more, and of course they went on there again with their five albums and they did their thing. So it's funny with the glam bam stuff uh, where you, there were people, I don't know any of other songs on the record. So were there any other heavy stuff on there or were you duped into it? Like when people bought uh, Queensryche when they heard uh, Silent Lucidity and they thought they were buying something slow and then it was nothing, that was, it was anything but that. Same with Extreme when they wanted more than words and people come into the record store and be like, I want that song by... Simon and Garfunkel, more than words, and you know, it's extreme. They buy extremes. Next thing you know, they're listening to Get the Funk Out. Anyway, what do you guys remember about Warren? Did you see Warren concert? I never saw Warren concert, so post below. Let me know your stories if you have any. Song of the day is Down Boys. I, that's that song I like. Uh, that's a good one. I mean, I got nothing wrong with uh, Heaven. That's fine. But uh, for Octane Friday, it certainly is Down Boys, so crank that one up. Whatever you're doing as you roll into the weekend, it's warrant time, people. Time for some warrant. Do what you're told. Have a good one, and as usual, catch on the flip side. <laughs>